We found a boat, then sailed away from the island. We had to. We didn't belong there. The new guy's name was George. I noticed when the anarchist said his name, he said it with a thick Belkan accent. How did you know that he was from Belka? Well, both my parents were from Belka, so... You never told me that. They say that Belkans are known for their conspiracies. <laughs> That's just a stereotype. Now, I simply stated my honest opinion and was thrown in jail for it. The princess sat there looking miserable. That was a dumbass stunt she pulled back there, but it got us on this boat. Take a look at that. This ship is heading for a single rope that's hanging down from the sky. Do you know how far the end of that rope reaches? Outer space. No. It is a direct connection to the very potential of mankind itself. Or at least it was until war erupted. It's my strong belief that... The rope might be connected to a very distant, faraway source of... of great conflict and strife. Even long before the war, the whole world started falling apart once Harling began trying to build it. I often wonder... What was going through Harling's mind when... when he was trying to destroy the very thing that... So many people were sacrificed in order to create. Sacrificed? What do you mean? Have you seen all of those countless old space shuttles on Tyler Island that are no longer in use? Yeah. <laughs> I always thought of them as a good source of scrap. They're an obsolete technology that was abandoned during the construction of the space elevator. Which would mean that if the space elevator was destroyed, it would be that much harder for mankind to reach the stars, until we find another way. But even then, Harling still went ahead and tried to destroy it. At the cost of his own life. That's not the way I heard it. What I heard was that he sacrificed himself to protect the tower from an incoming missile. Oh. I was told he tried to fly his ship into the tower in order to destroy it. I wonder which story is true, your royal highness. I don't know. Looking at it objectively, it's reasonable to believe that Harling had both options before him. When it comes to which one you think he took, I guess it's like a mirror. Yes. It is. It's like a mirror looking into your own soul, based on whichever choice you believe it was. At the moment, though, I can only see darkness. I think... I think that thing should be destroyed. Time for the briefing. Although, since we don't have any contact with HQ, it's not like this is an official mission. Anyway, it looks like the seizure of Tyler Island and the relief from Osea have been postponed. In the meantime, we just have to do what we can to survive. Since losing its capital city of Ferbanti, Eurusian forces have separated into smaller, autonomous factions. It looks like Eruja's largest force and leading faction will pass through the area around this base. The space elevator is significant to them, so they're probably heading there. Should we intercept? Why? I doubt they're going to start a fight now. Our top priority should be to get home. Let's go already. Yeah. It's not like we have the supplies, power, or even a real reason to 
put up a fight. But what are we going to do if they bring the fight to us? We need to be ready to push them back. If we head inland from here towards Arusia, there's an old castle that's been converted into a stockpiling base, Shalaji Castle. It's currently occupied by some of the Erusian forces that broke off, but we need ammo and fuel. They appear to have converted a freeway into a runway, so we can expect them to have the capacity for air combat. But they'll be easier to handle than Arusia's lead faction. While we can't use all our aircraft to attack, the transport carrying the stolen supplies needs support. Okay, Strider Squadron, you head out first and neuter the dogs at the stockpiling base. Rendezvous with Cyclops Squadron, who will bring the transport. Then we bring the supplies back to this base. Got it. Aircraft are our only threat. Sounds good. We'll make it. We're all gonna fly home. Together. Squadron, aircraft prep complete. You're cleared to taxi. No Ocean forces are in the region ahead. No allies here. No need to ID your target. We've set a number of priority targets, focusing on their anti-aircraft weaponry. Okay, team, to work. Unidentified aircraft, not sure of friend or foe. Fire anyway. We don't have time to be wondering if they're friendly or not. Target destroyed. So, we capture this base and take the fuel and supplies. That's the plan, right, Trigger? You take if you want to live. That's how it was where I grew up. I was just double-checking mission orders, Ocean. Watch it, enemy has a lot. 
mark on you.
about you. I see. Perhaps it would have been best to entrust the future to pilots like that. Let me test him then to see if he's truly worthy. Resupply went well. We should be okay on food and fuel reserves for a little while at least. Luckily, the rumor that the Erujian army is advancing nearby is only a rumor. There's no sign of them from the skies. Rumors, rumors, rumors. This is what happens when you lose communications. But we got one good fact. The plane trigger shot down was an advanced model of the XO2 Wyvern. It was developed in the last Continental War. Erugia had a lot up their sleeves. Apparently, they were even supposed to have Belkin aircraft back in the first war. What if Trigger couldn't shoot it down? Just thinking about it gives me chills. We're lucky to be here. In war, you never know what's lurking behind the curtains. But it looks like everything's loose now. Solid chain of command, rest periods after sorties, a battlefield where you know friend from foe. All of that's gone now, lost in a fog of confusion. Feels like a distant dream. Now, just how the hell are we gonna get out of this mess? 